sometimes I ask people, if you could ask God one question, what would it be? Invariably, at the top of the list or near the top of the list is this question, why does God permit evil? Or why do bad things happen to good people? That kind of question. You might have even asked it yourself to yourself from time to time. Why is there, why does God permit evil to happen, even to good people? There's, I'm, I'm bringing this up because the, the scriptures answer that question. The scriptures today answer that question. So when we leave church today, we'll have the answer to that question, but I want to set it up a little more. <coughs> There's generally, generally three types of bad things that happen to anybody, uh, to good people or to anybody. There's human against human evil, right? There's human versus human sin. There are natural disasters, and then there are accidents, let us say, due to mechanical failure, right? There's uh, human versus human evil, natural disasters, and sometimes it's just plain accidents. I'm going to address the first one today, the other two uh, because, the, again, the scriptures answer that question today. But uh, natural disasters and accidents, I'm going to save for another time. <coughs> In the gospel today, we hear about the wheat and the weeds growing up together. You and I, let us say, let's say you and I are the wheat, and the weeds are, are bad people. Is, is evil. Why does evil coexist? Why does God allow evil to coexist with good? In the days of Jesus, this, this weed that is mentioned in the gospel is called the bearded darnel plant, otherwise known as a tear, T-A-R-E. And even in some older translations of the Bible, it says the weeds and the tares. This bearded darnel plant or tear was indistinguishable from good wheat. It was indistinguishable. And so in the gospel, until, until the very end, and so in the gospel today, we hear the servants asking the master, do you want us to pull up the weeds? And he says, no, let them coexist. Let them grow up together. And at the judgment, then we'll be able to separate them. Human beings are not able to distinguish the, the, the weeds from the wheat, at least that's how, literally in the days of Jesus with the weeds and the wheat that were, that were growing and that are described in this gospel. <coughs> and that's how it is with us. Isn't it great that God is patient with us? Because how many people look at us and say, God, why do you allow evil to exist when you and I sin? The key, the key to understanding this is actually contained in that first reading from Wisdom. It's the last line. You gave your children good ground for hope that you would permit repentance of sins. You gave your children good ground for hope that you would permit, permit repentance for their sins. God allows us all to grow in the same field because his vision is eternal. And he wants everybody to have the chance to repent, have a change of heart, and become wheat. Change from weeds to wheat, to become good. We have no more strong example of this than St. Paul in our church. St. Paul wasn't always St. Paul. Many of you may recall the story of Saul. St. Paul was Saul before he became St. Paul. Saul was one of the biggest sinners you ever met, to the point of killing people in the name of God. Saul persecuted the Christians who were followers of Christ because they were following that new way and forsaking the ways of his Hebrew, the Hebrew ancestors. So he was killing them. Saul was one of the biggest sinners we have, a murderer. And we can even imagine the Christians of that day saying, God, why do you allow evil to exist? 
Why do you allow this man to have free reign? He's killing us, your servants. And then Paul had a con- and then Saul had a conversion experience. After Saul's conversion experience changed his name to Paul, and St. Paul became one of the greatest saints we have in the Catholic Church. God allows the weeds to grow simultaneously with the wheat because he allows for repentance. God's vision is eternal, not just on this earth. It can be hard for you and me, but he allows time for repentance and conversion to the end of salvation, to allow for conversion, which leads us to salvation. Why does God allow evil to coexist with good? Why does God allow human versus human sin? God is allowing time. God is patient. He wants everybody to repent, convert, and have salvation open to them. Are you buying it? Do you buy it? Maybe I'm not explaining it good enough. Okay, so in the days of Jesus, there's this wheat in weeds. No. Uh, do you buy it? Do you allow, Well, how many times do you, do you and I say to God, be merciful to me? How many times do we say that to God, be merciful to me? You never hear, we never say, God, enact your justice on me now. How often do we say, God, be just with me now? I sinned. Be, flare up your wrath and be just with me now. No, we didn't. I hope. I don't know. Does anybody say that? <laughs> right? No. We want, God, be merciful to me. Give me time. I'll try to change. I'll try to be better. God allows the evil, human on human sin, and evil to coexist with good, because as it says in our scriptures, you and I cannot tell the difference at the beginning, and he allows time for repentance. Are you buying it? Really? Oh, I must have said it right. Yeah. (laughs) That, when you leave here, when, when you see human on human sin on the news, and you hear about it from others, that's the, it's the answer that's provided to us in scripture. God is patient, wants us all to come to repentance for salvation.